So over the Christmas period I was very fortunate to have a few commissions. I'd probably say out of all of them this was definitely my favourite and it's also I'd say the most difficult one as well. So Joe actually sent me two reference photos and out of the two of them I decided to go with this one just because it has a bit more movement to it. I also quite like how all the faces are kind of like in a triangle shape and it kind of leads your eyes to each individual portrait. Throughout the drawing I'm going to be using some charcoal powder, a charcoal stick, some paint brushes, a blending tool and a putty rubber. So now I have my reference photo, I also have my equipment, I'm now ready to draw. So I've done a few family portraits like this before and even though there's three individual portraits in this I still just want to approach it just as one big drawing and the idea is to just strip everything down to its bare minimum so I want to take all the information that I can see completely out and it's about being able to find those shapes and angles within the drawing that will eventually lead you into the other areas that you're working on so for instance if you follow Joe's shoulder line, it eventually comes up and over around the top of Ellen's head. And if you follow the line around Joe's face, that cuts down to the side of Ellen's face. And that line continues all the way down to separate where the two dresses are. And even the baby's arm, if you have a look, it's pretty much in the middle of the top of Joe's head and the bottom of Ellen's dress. So once I have these main points in, I've already got a pretty good structure of where everything's going to go. And once I have that, I'm then able to start laying down those first tones. And I always like working from the darkest tones to the lightest tones. And at this stage of the drawing it is still essentially just an underdrawing. And I know the tones are still relatively light, but I still lay down the darkest of these light tones first. For me, it's just a bit easier to kind of gauge where those lighter tones will go once I have those darker tones down. I find it very difficult to judge where those light tones will be just from a white blank piece of paper so if I lay down those darker tones first it makes it much easier for me to kind of gauge where everything goes. And out of all the three portraits Joe actually has the darkest tones out of everyone. Ellen then has a lot of mid tones and the baby has a lot of light tones. So in theory, I would actually be working on Joe first, but because he is slightly out of focus in this photo, I'm actually gonna be using Ellen as my main reference point and using her to kind of gauge where everything else will go. I've always been married to the idea of just focusing on hyper realism portraits and even though I love doing them and it's just something I've always been drawn to ever since I was a little kid it also restricted me in a lot of ways as well whenever I went traveling or if I wasn't at home it, I found it very difficult to continue with my drawings and I wanted a way to still be able to have that freedom while I was away and a couple of years ago I changed my style up a little bit I wanted to try and break away from what I already knew and try and venture into something different. And I've always loved the more abstract and suggestive artwork. And I wanted to see if I could try and combine that with the work that I already know. And it's been a bit of a learning curve because I'm so used to working with grids and working section by section. And with these style of drawings, you can't really do that. I had to use almost like a different part of my brain in order to do these kind of drawings. Before it would just be working from square to square and try and make it as tight and saturated and as realistic as possible, which is really fun in its own way. But as I said, it's also quite restrictive in the way that I would work with it and because I'm not using grids as well it adds another element of difficulty to it which again is quite fun in its own way when it goes right anyway if it goes wrong it can be quite frustrating but again that is part of the learning so a little side note I actually sent this video to my friend he pretty much told me <laughs> he pretty much told me that I shouldn't refer to my drawing as I'm quite happy with it or I'm pretty happy with it because he says it sounds negative. So I'm going to have to try and be more positive about my work, which is actually really difficult for me. 
And actually, to be honest with you, I think most artists or anybody who creates things struggle to not compliment their own work, but to not pick it apart, basically. I don't think I'm ever 100% happy with what I've done, which I think is fine because there's always room for improvement. And, you know, you are always your own worst critic as well. But just to keep my friend happy, I'm going to try and be a little bit more positive about how I'm going to talk about my drawing. So here we go. I'm going to try anyway. So I'm really happy with how the drawing came out and I'm especially happy with how I managed to capture both dresses. And I found it was just all about just slowly building it up and there's actually be some areas that I would purposely go a little bit too dark just so I could rub some of it out. It's easier to get a smoother fade than trying to do it with either my paintbrush or my blending tool. There's areas of the background that I absolutely love and there's areas of the background that I would probably, uh, maybe not do differently, but I kind of have a, a love-hate relationship with backgrounds just because I never really know how I'm going to approach them. But what I have learned is instead of trying to force the background in a certain way, I let the drawing kind of show me how it wants to look and kind of show me where it wants to go. I know that sounds quite airy-fairy, but it generally does actually help if you just not listen to your drawing, but if you, if you allow it to present itself in a certain way, it will kind of tell you where it wants to go. It really does help. So here we are. This is the finished drawing. This one took me about seven to 10 days to do, I think. Um, that wasn't all day, every single day. This was obviously just in between work and life. It was a lot of fun to do, so thank you very much, Joe. This is my first video, so I do hope you like it. It has taken me too long to get to this point. I've got it now, I've got one in the bag. Thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.